Hi, my name's Ed, locally known as the Mermaid Hunter. This is lovely Nikki. Hi. And welcome to Sony Key West. The genesis of the Sea Siren Project began 15 years ago when I bought this, uh, this, this home right on the water and I found and discovered a shipwreck just 300 feet from my dock. It is a 26-foot cabin cruiser. It's in a residential canal. It's deep. It's 35 feet deep. And the water, of course, is not good. It's green. It is pure green, as all the canal water and inshore waters are. My background is a still photographer and a glamour photographer. And right away, I knew what I wanted to do was to put a figure, weightless, floating, and used that ship as a background and I wanted to call it the Sea Siren. So there the search began. And for the past 15 years I've been searching for it. I've been searching for the right model, for the right performer to get in front of my camera to bring this vision of this figurine, of this, this beautiful female figure in and out of this shipwreck. This beautiful, dark, dangerous environment. But there's a lot of pros and cons here, and I'll describe just a few. One, it's close. It's, it's just 300 feet. I can go there whenever the water, the, the water and wind is good. But it's a residential canal. It's 35 feet deep and there was a silt problem. Silt is kind of like dust and it just settles on the wreck so that whenever the model would come and just touch anything, boom, remember that? A, a, a plume of silt and because there was no current the plume of silt would just stay there. The camera therefore didn't know where to focus it was focusing on the silt, on the model, didn't know where to go. And also it turned into like a mushroom. And that also prevented uh, for me to having a safety diver. A safety diver could be there and the flippers, oof. and before you know it, the whole location would become unusable. So that kind of like mandated that I could not have a safety diver. There would just be two people involved in this project, myself and Nick. In addition to silt were the, were the sharp barnacles. And you'll see uh, Nikki in the film that, yeah. and they'll, they're razor sharp. They, they cut you up without even knowing it. You don't even know you're cut up until after the fact and now you're bleeding. So as she's going through, she has to know what to touch, what to grab. So we had the silt factor. We had the barnacles. Oh, and there was also ships. Even though it was a residential canal, it was home port to a lot of commercial vessels. So there was actually boat traffic right over this wreck, which we had to take into account. All my, all my friends, all my professional photographer, underwater friends, that it couldn't be done. It just could not be done. So I have, I have 15 years of stories regarding auditioning the the talent, finding the the right, just the right the right girl to, to do this this deep job, this deep water, this dangerous job. And here's one story that that sticks out. Her name was Laura. Beautiful girl, came from the Carolinas, came here for a couple of days for the audition to try out. Good swimmer, good breath holder. She was down, she was okay. Went into the wreck and then she stayed there too long. She was inside the wreck too long. And then she panicked. And then she came out real quick through the, through the windows. Barnacles, cut her up. Blood everywhere. We get back to the boat. And then here comes some, some little Cuban fella. All, you're being, she, they're shooting at you. And some woman thinks we're diving for local lobster. I'm, I'm her neighbor. She doesn't recognize me. She's with a, uh, a 38 revolver. She's shooting at us. So this poor girl, Laura, she comes up. She's all bloodied up. She's on the <laughs> boat. 
and then she's being shot at with a third ear. I said, sweetheart, you're, you've earned this. <laughs> True story. Anyway, we, we had this woman arrested and, and taken away, and oh my God, I've got stories. Okay, so story number two. Her name was Ruby. She was a doctor, a tiny little girl from the Caribbean. She had a uh, dark-skinned uh, Caribbean father and a white mother, which made her like a mulatto, and which was also good because a lot of the white, uh, fair-skinned girls were, were bleaching out in this dark environment under there. Boy, we came so close. She was here, she was from Tampa, Florida. She would come down for a week, and there'd be some times where the whole week was wasted. It took us five years, five years, and we came so close. Uh, to finishing the, the project. Um, but then, then she took ill, and then I, I lost contact with her, and, and, just, and she just disappeared into the night. I have literally tested and auditioned hundreds of, of young, beautiful women to do this difficult and deep assignment. I lose a lot because of ear pressure. I lose almost 40%. They can't, uh, they can't clear their ears, they can't pop their ears, they can't what is called equalize. So they will go down maybe eight feet and that's it. They, they just can't clear that ear pressure. Uh, I lose some because they might reach the wreck, but they don't have the breath hold. They just run out of air. So they might reach the wreck, they might touch it and it's cool, but well, gotta go back up. And if they're not a the good breath hold, can't use them. I, I lose some girls because they go to the wreck and then they freeze. They don't want to go inside the shipwreck. They don't want to put a roof over their head. It freaks them out like a little bit of claustrophobia. And they, so I gave up, couldn't find the right talent. It was now, the Sea Siren Project was now put on the back burner. Um, I decided I was going to make my home into a bed and breakfast and I needed a model to do the marketing and promotion. And that's when I, right? Yeah, that's when you met me. That's when I met Nikki. Um, you were on a world world tour. Yeah, I was on my way to the US. How did we meet? Well, I put out a casting on Model Mayhem and Ed over here sent me a message the very second morning. So she came with, uh, with her fiance, Yako, and boy, I was seduced. I was simply seduced. I was seduced by the Sea Siren for the Sea Siren project. So Nikki came down for 10 days and uh, we actually did the, the marketing um, for the bed and breakfast. But in the meantime, I, I presented the Sea Siren concept to her. Ed had other plans up his sleeve. And it was winter time, so we couldn't get into the ocean. I auditioned Nikki in a four foot deep, warm swimming pool. Which was nice. I knew, I, I, I was seduced. I, I just got seduced. I, I, I was, I knew Nikki was the, I knew Nikki was sent to me to do this project. I, I can't describe it. I can't tell you why, but I, I, I knew Nikki was, was the sea siren. The bed and breakfast concept, gone. <laughs> gone, yeah. Okay, so the Sea Siren Project has three elements uh, to it. A collection of 20 large framed black and white prints. A fine art film. And a behind the scenes film. I said, Nikki? I need a female, a nude female form, down deep, interacting with the shipwreck, uh, as if she's at home in the shipwreck. She has to yep. be inside it. She has to be out inside the shipwreck, outside. It has to be like her home. The emphasis is on the female form in a weightless environment. It, it, you never get tired of looking at, at the female form, especially now when it's underwater, hairs flowing, weightless, 
no gravity at work. And if we can add a little bit of danger to it, a little bit of, uh, of drama to it, so much the better. Um, so Nikki came on board. She says, okay, I'm, I'm with that. And I told her, I said, well, there's, you know, it's not going to be easy. It's going to be a lot it wasn't of, easy. It's going to be a lot of training involved. The concept was no jewelry, uh, bare, uh, bare figure. We, we, we talked a little bit about the, the wardrobe. We decided no wardrobe. No Greek toga, no fish tail, just the female form. She went back to see, returned to South Africa, and I had six months to prepare. When Nikki came to Key West, got acclimated, and it's now time to, to get into physical conditioning. I literally became like a physical trainer. Yeah, yeah. you did. You except, really did. Except it had to be underwater. And so I had Nikki actually doing <laughs> sit-ups underwater. We did push-ups underwater. <laughs> It was all in terms of to get her to uh, believe that even though there was the initial need for breath, that she could work through it a little bit. And breath holding is like any skill. The more you do it, the better you, you become at it. So Nikki just had to train and, and just let it hurt, count to 10. Next and one. And it really starts to hurt. Let it hurt, count to 10 before you, before you surface. And little by little, she she increased. Well, I think the first time was, <laughs> first, was like 15 <laughs> seconds of her, 15 seconds, and then we went up to to, to half a minute. And before and it doesn't take long, it doesn't take long. Before you know it, Nikki is 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 at a minute and a half underwater. She's still performing. She's still looking comfortable. But we had to get up to the two minutes. Think, think the Rocky, the Rocky music. That's all that was going through my head. And and to build up her pressure, we we got into some yoga. But the big, the big conditioning was the breath hold. Mm. You just have to get used to the water up your nose, in your sinuses, coming out of your ears. Well, the first three times really hurt. Yeah. But after that, you can feel it damn yeah. thing. Yeah. After, after about the third, fourth time, your body accepts being water up your nose, and, and, and it becomes like a no big thing. The way I had it scheduled out is there would be two weeks of physical and mental, mental training. And the last two weeks would be shooting on the wreck, doing the art. Um, the first week we, we went to the uh, community swimming pool, yeah. which was a hundred feet long, swimming the length of, and it took was a, hard. It was yeah. hard, it was hard. It, it took some training. And I want to make this point that I got lucky. Nikki was the complete package, she was the gift because this woman kept her legs straight. Oh my God, it was a gift. It was a gift to me. And the second week I prepared Nikki mentally for what she was going to be facing. But the third exercise was by far the most devious. I saw a magic act, Mark Wilson, way back. He was, a, he was an entertainer in Las Vegas and he had to speak aquarium and he would put his assistant, his beautiful assistant, in this aquarium, lock it up, chains, lock her up. And she's underwater, by the way. She's underwater, locked up. And at the last second, they would change places. Boom, how'd that happen? So that was in my mind. I said, no. I said that might work. And I'm, <laughs> this whole project was, was a gift because the very, I, the very next day after I got that idea, oh my good, you know, where, where am I gonna get a, a big aquarium to hold Nikki. My next door neighbor throws one away. Honest to God, I get the aquarium, I bring it in. I actually make it so that we could lock, with locks, lock Nikki in underwater. In the tank like a fish. <laughs> we, fill the, uh, we fill the aquarium up with water. I, I show Nikki the locks. Nikki, you're gonna be locked in. Boom, she goes underwater, we, we close the lids down, we lock her up, and we walk away. And now Nikki's underwater, locked in, in this aquarium. God knows what was on her mind. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what was on her mind. Let me the hell out of here. That's what was on her mind. Because you, you'll see her looking around, where'd, where'd they go? 
Uh, and I'm talking about me and, and her fiance, Yako. Thank you, Yako. I couldn't do this without Yako. And, and so she was, she's underwater inside this aquarium looking around. Well, I'll, I had to hold my breath. And uh, the one time we did the whole thing and I got underwater and um, I did the acting, but I and really, we thought you were really acting. got out of breath. Yeah. So I really had That's to right. come up and breathe. And they thought I was acting. <laughs> right, right. I wasn't acting. <laughs> I've been teaching beautiful young women how to be underwater performers for 40 years. I've developed my own system, my own technique. Now it was time for Nikki to be introduced to saltwater, to creatures, to critters, fish, lobster, everything's gonna be around her, but without scuba. I introduced her to saltwater on a small little shallow uh, reef right outside my, uh, uh, off my deck called Chicken Bone Reef. They can perform beautifully. So what I've done and what I've learned in the past is to train them to be good free divers. We spent one day with Scuba. I just wanted her to get the feel. Introduce me to everything down yep. there and what it looks like. Yep. And... We are now day 21 into the shoot. We're shooting for real now. Yeah, the training's over now. So the routine was that we had a morning session, a morning shoot, and we had an afternoon shoot. Yeah. And um, each time, I think we went down 20 times. Or until the eyes got bad, or until yeah. the fatigue set in. Some days the the water and the, the wind was a little colder than the normal, and so I had uh, there was a couple of difficult shots that I wanted Nikki to do. Now the boat is 26 feet long, and I wanted in one shot to have Nikki go entirely around the boat. So that was almost 100 feet around the boat, uh, well, 50 feet, 26, 26, and me, down at, at, 30, at 35 feet deep. So that was a tough shot. Yeah, Which it was Which one did tough. you do that like? Well, there were, yeah. Going there through? There was two. The hatchway was a little difficult because I couldn't see a damn thing down there. And I was a little afraid for uh, eels and stuff like that. And uh, I remember the one time I did it and I went through, and as I, almost was out of the cabin for a split second there i think i saw something but it it just freaked me out entirely yeah. when you experience the sea siren whether it be online or you actually go into catch it in one of the galleries and watch the the fine art film I want you to pay close attention to Nick's performance. It's actually quite stunning that I was able to take this girl and in 30 days, she did actually become a sea siren. And it transformed me. Watch the, the beauty of her lines, the legs, the, the arms. I waited 15 years for this. And, and she entered my life and I was smitten. I was seduced, just gorgeous, gorgeous. And to think 20 days ago, she was on a runway. Now she's 35 feet underwater, becoming this mythical sea siren. It's, it, it's, it's just an incredible, an incredible transformation. It, 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 it was a gift. Enjoy. Should, this is the I, gizmo. This, yeah, this, this, I call this the gizmo. And this is, <laughs> I should give it more respect than, than it looks, but this is, this is a homemade gizmo. <laughs> and the sun would always be at my uh, in my back, over my shoulder. And this plate created shadow. So when this particulate, now think of it like a sandstorm. Um, the particulates in the water, Nikki is five, 10 feet in front of me. The GoPro, if I did not have this, this piece here, all this particulate that was floating would be like a, like a snowstorm. And the camera would pick this up and it would uh, focus on this. On this and you wouldn't see Nikki uh, she'd be 
over overtaken by particulate this caused a little bit of shadow and when the particulate is in shadow it, it just simply disappears so for all you photographers out there now I shot in a residential canal the 12th Street Canal who would think that you could produce a body of art in the 12th Street Canal we had boat traffic there was boat traffic all over us yeah there was actually a lot of stuff against us yeah we had everything going against us but anyway I wanted to show it to you this is the gizmo it's homemade hey I might even patent something like this I might refine it and patent it but anyway so what about Key West what do you like about Key West? You spent everything. You spent 30 days here in Key West. You're kind of like new to it. You're from South Africa. What? Uh, and you came from winter time to summer time. But as you discovered Key West, it was, was anything anything hit you? Yeah. Well, that was a much worse experience when I went out dancing. Um, uh, Yaku and I went to. Cuban restaurant, what was it called? Oh, but anyway, we went there and uh, he had peeled pork and I had garlic shrimp. Yeah. And afterwards, we went uh, to that bar on top of the bull. Top of the bull. It's a clothing optional. Yeah, That's we it. went there and uh, we had a Duval crawl. Oh, the, the Duval crawl is bar hopping. You start out walking, going to yeah, all the bars crawl. on Duval Street, and you end up crawling home. It's called Duval Crawl. Yeah, well, you weren't. You never. I had, did. Yeah, no. I did. No. <laughs> Why do you think I was so sick the next morning? Oh jeez. Oh, I was really sick. The garlic smell and never again. But she worked. I made her work. I did. Yeah. A mermaid tail. I've actually had uh, uh, models down on the reef in the tail on the reef and that tail would get stuck in the corals and then boy she's she's just she's stuck down there there's no safety divers um, and it the 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 danger uh, quotient just just rises uh, exponentially okay now last thing folks the this is not the last chapter between Nikki and I we're going to be producing a pilot I'm coming back yeah coming back uh, the pilot is going to be called The Guardian. It is for my new enterprise. It's a online science fiction soap opera called Mermaid Hunter. And Nikki is going to be playing the character of The Guardian. Kick-ass. Kick-ass. Oh, Kick-ass. Character. Character. Oh, yeah. my goodness. So go online, the sea siren com or the mermaid hunter.com. Take then read the stories. Um, Guaranteed you're going to love it. Next time, oh, it's going to be so much fun. See you there. Bye. Bye.